Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel with a report from the road in the Toyota. Uh, what you're looking at is my digital multimeter inside the cabin of the car monitoring the millivolt drop across the poor man's shunt underneath the hood. So I'm, I'm seeing 27 millivolts, that means I'm drawing 27 amps through the cell right now. I'm not sure what the voltage is, it's someplace around 12.7. Um, this morning it was 36 degrees when I left, uh, left the, walked out the door and we had a frost last night. Now one of the conditions that, that I'm running into with the cell is that when the cell is cold, i.e. this morning, 36 degrees, I started up and I was only drawing 12 amps. That means I was producing something in the order of one liter per minute or less. Uh, typically in the morning when I get up and I start the, start the vehicle, it starts out at around 14 amps, so just a little over one liter per minute. Um, when I, by the time I'm finished driving at the end of the day, the cell has warmed up to the point where I am drawing anywhere between 35 and 38 amps, which is where I want it to be, producing three and a half liters per minute. Now, given the fact that my, my production values are varying this widely, uh, taking that into consideration, I am observing an increase in gas mileage right now with HHO alone of approximately 12%. I've gone from 16.5 miles per gallon average to 18.5 miles per gallon average. The next phase of, of construction is going to be to build a second pulse width modulator that I have created, um, but not a, a bench top model, something that can go underneath the hood, that will also sense current and regulate the current based, uh, regulate the, the, the pulse width duty cycle based on the amount of current being drawn. What I want to do is increase the concentration of the electrolyte so that in its cold state, it's drawing approximately 30 to 35 amps, which is what it would normally draw when it was when it was hot. Now, if I were to pump straight DC into that cell, I could expect that cell to try and draw uh, well over 100 amps when it when it got fully hot. Hence, this is where the pulse width modulation circuit is going to come into play. As the cell warms up, the conductivity increases, meaning the resistance decreases, and the amount of current that the cell wants to draw goes up. The pulse width modulator circuit will sense that current change and decrease the duty cycle going to the cell. So the pulse current will increase, but the RMS current, the RMS value, will decrease. So let's say the cell uh, started out at 35 amps, and that's that's the amperage draw I want it to, to, to uh, take from the vehicle. If under normal conditions it were to go up to 70 amps, the pulse width modulator circuit will be sending approximately 50% duty cycle to the cell, meaning it will be pulsing 70 amps half the time for an RMS current value of 35 amps. I don't know if that's going to increase the overall efficiency of the cell. I'm kind of interested to see if that's going to change the efficiency of the cell. In fact, I'll be performing some tests on that just to see whether or not uh, the, uh, the peak value current has, has an effect uh, over the RMS value current going into the cell. The key factor to remember here is that whatever the peak value current of the cell is going to be, the power devices that you're using to deliver the pulse width modulation signal to must be able to deliver that peak current. Fortunately, the IRF 064s that I'm, that I'm working with have a peak output current of 110 amps. So with two of these in parallel, giving me a peak output current of 220 amps possible. That means I'm well within the safety, uh, the safety margin of those devices, and uh, it should prove to be a very interesting experiment. So, wish me luck. That's it for my report from the road. I will have more data for you soon, I hope.